Hey guys, it's Misty with Pink Fairy Creations. I am going to be doing a demo on how I mix my colors um, and what paint I use. So, um, just grab whatever uh, um, base that you use. This is a good one. This one is, this is just a sample one, but it's a good one. It's semi-gloss. Um, and you want ultra deep base. That's what you want. It's ultra deep base. Um, and whatever brand works. So I uh, am going to do my measurements, which is three parts of the untinted house paint. So I'm going one, let's get you closer, okay so one, two, three and you can do this in bigger like if you want bigger batches you can do like three ounces instead of three teaspoons this is just the half of a tablespoon you can whatever you decide to do three parts just means three t three times the amount so if you do ounces then it's three ounces of this to whatever parts of the rest of the stuff you put in now I'm going to put some GEC 800, just a half of a half <laughs> of a teaspoon, <laughs> tablespoon, sorry. Then I'm going to do one, so three to one, part polycrylic, which is, I'll show you. I'll show you what the can looks like. Okay, right. so polycrylic. So that's what you want for the. So three parts of this to one part of this. So if you do three ounces of this, you need one ounce of this. If you do three tablespoons of this, you need one tablespoon of this. So three to one. Okay. And then GAC 800 is just half of whatever you use for the, the one part. So the three to one. So I did one part polyacrylic. I need a half of the one part. I need half of that in GAC 800 so that you know when you're doing bigger batches and whatnot. So since it was, um, I did a, tea, a half a teaspoon, tablespoon of the polyacrylic, then I do a half of that for my GAC 800. Okay. And <clears throat> then I'm going to make so after that you want to stir that really really well. <clears throat> so you want the consistency you want it like that sorry I don't know if you can see that um, but you want it runny to where it leaves a mound for about three seconds like one two three one, two, three. And there should not be any clumps in it or anything. If you get clumps in it, it's probably from your um, untinted paint. <laughs> that stuff likes to have some weird stuff in it, like boogers and 
hair and no I'm just kidding but <laughs> you find some weird stuff especially booger looking things <clears throat> okay so now I'm going to mix some colors with you I'm going to mix a tube paint and then I'm going to mix a Um, and then I'm going to mix a powdered one with you. So these cups, I get them on Amazon. They have a little lid. All you do is search cup with lid attached. You'll find them. What I do is I use, I reuse these. So this is a dried one. I just, instead of scraping it when you keep them, keep containers, instead of scraping it and then washing it out and yada yada, you wait till the stuff dries and then you just grab like a tweezers or this is a tool for weeding with vinyl. So you just go like that and you pull the whole thing out and it's done. It's literally like a two second cleanup and then you clean up the sides. This stuff just comes right out. There's no, no need for soap and water. So I literally Pull it all off, and it literally takes two seconds. So I reuse these, and they're really cheap as it is, So, and they're good quality. Just look for the ones that are like four and a half, five star on Amazon. So, you literally can get it off from the inside and the outside, any paint. So, that's that. It's all clean and ready to go. Okay, so these are all used, but, you know, recycled. So I'm going to grab a big batch that I already made up of my medium. And I'm going to pour some. So these are two ounce cups. So however much you want to fill it up. I'm, I just usually fill the cups almost to the top, but leave enough room to mix paint or whatnot in it. Sometimes these these things are hard once the stuff's in them because the, the lid likes to be top heavy and tip it over. But once you get the paint in it, it's just fine. <laughs> okay. A little bit more. All right. So now let's get you closer. Sorry about that. Okay. So now with these, I'm going to get a tube paint. This is Amsterdam. A uh, permanent red purple, which is a really pretty color. So, for two ounces worth of paint, and literally all you're doing with this, with the paint in these in this mixed medium, is you are tinting it. If you put a pea size in there and it tints it to the color you want, you're good. You don't have to add any more. There's no certain amount that you have to have in it. You just want it colored. So I'm gonna do like a blueberry size. And drop it in. And then you wanna stir it. And if I don't get the desired color, cause obviously you're not gonna be able to go darker than what the color actually is. So color's this. And if it's the same colors as in here, then you can't go any darker. There's no need of putting more paint in it. And two, the goal is to keep, try to keep the same consistency as the medium by itself without painting it, you want to try to keep that same consistency. So see how it leaves mound? About three seconds. Yep. Okay. So that's what you want there. So that's a perfect, perfect shade, perfect color. Now I'm going to mix, a, I'm going to do a iridescent color. And also a, um, a powder pigment. So you can use Pearl X, you can use Color Art. 
I love the color art, um, the color art pigments. They are the most amazing thing on this earth. Um, so I'm going to make a, let's do a blue color. So I'm going to make just this color by itself. So this is a color art primary elements is what it's called. Um, this one is majestic blue. So if you go to colorart.com, that's how you can get these colors. So I'm going to do one iridescent. So I'm going to do a violet, iridescent violet. So I'm going to mix up one. Okay, so I did the regular paint, which is with any paint. The thicker the paint, the less that you usually have to put in. So let's just do just regular primary element. So remember, these are two ounce cups and we're just wanting to tint it. So I'm gonna start out with just a little scoop, just like that. I'm going to mix it, and if it's a good color, it's good to go. So really, you're just wanting to work with, like, pea-size um, pea size amounts to start. And then just add a little bit as you go if you want a darker color. So, for instance, this, that was a perfect amount, because if I go any more, it's not going to make the color go any darker. It's just going to make it thicker. Because, see the color on here and the color here, they match, so they're, they're good to go. They're the same color. So now, notice the consistency is still the same. The other one, you can add a little bit of tube paint, like I'm going to do in this one, but, but literally that's all you do for the powdered pigments. You literally just put it right out of the container into the medium and stir it really good. Some people wet it down with retarder or different things before they add it or polyacrylic before they add the medium to it, I put it straight in the medium. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You can do whatever you'd like. Now I'm going to be adding an iridescent tube paint, which is golden, iridescent violet. So I'm going to be adding this, so I'm just going to do a blob. Because it is iridescent, I like to add a little bit more than I'd regularly do. So then, sorry, I'm put, trying to put the lid back on. <laughs> okay, and then I got the iridescent violet from Primary Elements. So it's a bling it. Um, these also you can use in resin, the bling it ones. But they also, on color art, they also have resin colors, pigments. So now I'm just going to add a nice heap. Like, once again, it's iridescent, so I like to add a little bit more. Just because I like it to have that extra vibrancy because there's no color to it, really. So I'm just stirring that bad boy up. Right into the mix. Okay. So there is that. it really good when it's powder. And I've noticed um, when you mix the medium together, so the three parts that we just did, the three parts on tinted house paint to blah blah blah, um, I've noticed it works the best if you mix it up, mix your colors in, and let them sit for the day, then they turn out, they just seem to work better. Okay, so now let's make some cell activator. So, let's see, for cell activator, we need flood Floatrol, a cup, obviously, <laughs> and you can make these in any different, any color you want, so we're going to do a different color just to show you. So 
Lisa. You only need Min, Min Wax Wood Conditioner. You'll need PVA glue or Elmer's glue, which is, it's a PVA glue. I use Elmer's or PVA, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now, get your measuring spoons out. And let's go with. So I do three parts, three to one ratio. So what that means is I'm doing order. I'm doing it in cups, ounces, teaspoons, tablespoons. You're gonna do three parts of the flow troll. So one. Two, three. Okay, so then, so if I'm doing three parts flow troll, I'm doing one part paint. So three, um, half a tablespoons. So three of those to one part paint. And paint for your cell activator. You can use any color. There's different brands that work better, yes but you can use any color you want for a cell activator as long as it's opaque. Opaque means that it is not translucent, meaning it's not see-through. So for instance, um, if nobody knows what these mean, so on these bottles, so see the square that has a line through it? That means, so when it's just a blank square like that, it means that it is translucent, so you can see through it. This one has, so this is Liquitex. This one has a thing on the back where the little square, so you're always looking for the square on the expensive paints, they have squares. So that square right there means that it is opaque because it's fully covered in. Sometimes they'll be white filled in or black filled in. It depends on the color of the bottle. They just make it to where you can see it. If it's fully solid colored in, it's opaque. If it's not colored in at all, it is transparent, see-through. If it has, let's see, let me grab another one. That's what, um, on the golden ones, if you can see the lines at the top of the color, that means that's how transparent or opaque it is. If you can't see the lines, it means it's not see-through. If you can see the lines, it's transparent, so it's see-through. Um, let me get one that has bolts. Um, give me one second. another one believe it or not this one is so this one you can use as a cell activator because it has it's fully opaque this one means it's half and half so you could go both ways so it's half transparent half opaque so see that that's what that means so a full square covered in is opaque a half is is a half square like this one is half opaque, half translucent, a f and then an empty square like this one means that it is completely see-through, transparent, okay? So any opaque color with the full co box covered in, you can use for cell activator. I'm going to use this one for my cell activator, which is the pink, it is called Persian Rose. So I'm gonna use a whole half a teaspoon of this. And I like to just, I just hit it down to make sure it's even. Okay. So there's that. And 
you want to do a half of a teaspoon, half of this. So whatever you're using, so say you use one teaspoon of paint and three teaspoons of Floetrol, you want to use a half teaspoon of glue. I'm using a half tablespoon, so I'm going to use half of that. So whatever you use for your color, use half for the glue. Half the amount for glue. So just cut it in half. So if it's a one tablespoon of color, you're going to do a half tablespoon of paint. Or of glue, sorry. Jeez, I'm having brain parts. Okay, so now... Now that we got that, now we want um, the smallest little thingy on, well, not the smallest, but, oh yes, the smallest. So the eighth of a teaspoon, the smallest little spoon on your thing, you want in wood conditioner. So I have mine in a little bottle. Let me see if I can. <laughs> Looks like it's hardening up on me. Okay. So that amount of the Minwax wood conditioner. Pre-stain. And it is water-based, I believe. doesn't say on it, but it should be because we're not, I think it would say if it was different. Okay, so now we are going to stir this puppy up. And you want to stir it really good. You almost want to whip it like if you were making homemade whipped cream or making homemade ranch or pudding, I don't know, just whip it good. <laughs> And some people add in ink to make it more, basically it just helps the color be more vibrant, but it also can make your thing, it can thin it out also. So be careful with doing um, too much ink. A lot of people just add like maybe five drops to this amount, but I don't have a color that's pink for this, so for this particular cell activator, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just going to do it as is and just whip it up real good. And then I'm going to show you a cool trick too to test out your colors um, without a pillow. Okay. Just stir that puppy real good. Also, um, if you want to do the Shelly Art course, which teaches you a lot of stuff, and the best part is the Facebook group, because you will, if you don't ha have results, you will get results with all the support in there. Um, but uh, they, if you want to take that course, I'll leave the link below, and don't forget to use my code. I'll link that in below too for 15% off, I believe. It's a percentage off, so don't forget to don't don't leave that behind. Make sure you use it. And I believe the course is only like a hundred dollars with um, with the discount on top of sometimes she does a sale, so you can get it pretty cheap. But it's not no thousand dollars and way expensive. It's affordable. Okay. Um, and the consistency you want it is to where it drips right off in a uh, in a steady flow. And if I was doing it with Australian Flood Flow Troll, 
which is this magic sauce is what Lisa Marvin would call it. This magic sauce is available on eBay and this is um, Australian Flood Floetrol, which has some ingredient in it that makes it magic and this is what you can mix with your for your cell activator. You'd do three parts of this, one part paint and another and a little bit of PVA glue. Exactly like this recipe minus the wood conditioner. So same recipe with this Floetrol, just no wood conditioner. This is a completely dry uh, one that I'm just going to go over because I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate how you can blow your, um, do a bloom without even having a pillow down just to experiment, see if your consistencies are right. So I'm going to start out with blue. Mind you, I have no pillow down. Then I'm going to do the transparent because I didn't think about the colors when I mixed them of <laughs> putting them together and showing a demo. So we get some random, random colors. We get an iridescent, a blue, and a pink, and a pink cell activator. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I meant to do the pink first. Dang it. It's okay. Okay. So there's that. And now... Our, our trusty little cell activator. Oops, it's a little much. Okay, now for any of you that have not watched my other videos, you want to blow, when you blow down, you want to blow harder as you pull your head back up. So, let me get the bubbles. It's not like it matters because I'm not keeping it, but <laughs> do it the right way. So see how I blow up my head up? And see those, see those cells? So any color can work for a cell activator. So. <clears throat> If I did that with a blue or with a black or any other color, it's all the same. It works just as good um, as the titanium white. Most people do mix it with most of the time people use these as your main cell activators. So this is the Amsterdam titanium white standard series. Sorry. Standard series and the oxide black. Oops, wrong side. There we go. Oxide black. So notice the transparency. It's full, fully covered. That means it's opaque. This one also opaque. So that's basically all the main thing that you need to make sure that you're um, that you're cell activator has is an opaque color because you can do it all day long with a translucent color but what it means is it's going to disappear and the whole goal for cells is to see them so you don't want to make it disappear by doing an opaque color so <clears throat> there's that and if you have any questions leave them below if you have uh if you need any help i do do um classes online classes to help people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, any and all of my art is for sale that you see if it hasn't been claimed already or sold. Um, but if you do have any questions or I can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help. Um, and then also go check out my other videos for uh, 
for all my other designs and blooms that I do and different things. If you want to see a certain video, let me know. I'm more than happy to do it. And here's one of the finished products. But see that's, you get that peacock effect. See how the color of cell is inside the color? Like the colors inside the color inside the color. That happens when you use the opaque paints with translucent paints. So that's when you layer different colors. Um, <clears throat> like if you do, opaque colors are best on the bottom to layer. And then the transparent ones going up so that the bottom one <clears throat> is not see-through, but the rest of them are, so they show through to each other to get that peacock effect. So, that's how you get that peacock effect. It's really hard to do, but if you just mess with your paints and play around a lot, you'll you'll get it. But, so that is it. We covered um, making the bloom recipe. I also have it linked in the description. But go check out my videos. Don't forget to subscribe. And you guys have a fabulous day. And thanks as always for jo joining me. Have a great one, guys.